In FreeCAD, hoses and tubing are usually specified either by lofting through a series of sketches or by sweeping along a spline in three dimensions. While there are several ways to specify a spline, whenever possible, it's always nice to let FreeCAD do the heavy lifting for us. Today I'm going to show you how to do that in the part workbench using the Blend Curve tool from the Curves workbench. If you don't have the Curves Workbench installed, I highly recommend that you go to Tools, Add-on Manager, and install it now. To avoid having to constantly switch between different workbenches, I'll be using a custom toolbar installed into the Part Workbench. If you need some help to create a custom toolbar, see my previous video here. For this exercise, I'm going to be using the Create New Sketch tool from the Sketcher, and the Blend Curve tool from the Curves Workbench. For purposes of demonstration, I'll just use a cube and set it to 30 millimeters on a side and add to it a tube to act as a hose flange. Let's make that 10 millimeters in radius and one millimeter thick and say 10 millimeters high. Now we can fix the tube to a face of the cube. I'll use inertial CS as the attachment method so it'll simply be centered on the face. In real life we would have some sort of barb or thread to affix the hose, but this is just the demonstration. Let's fuse the flange to the cube so we're working with one solid piece. Now I'll just make a duplicate so we have somewhere to route the hose to. And move it in three dimensions so they're not conveniently aligned. Finally, we're ready to route the hose. We'll need a line to act as an anchor for our blend curve. I'll start by creating a sketch on the face and set to cross-section view to get everything else out of the way. I'll bring in the outer circle as external geometry so that we can get the center point. The only thing we need in this sketch is a point in real geometry that we can extrude into a guideline. Points are a little bit odd in FreeCAD Sketcher in that even when you're creating real geometry, the point itself will be construction geometry. So let's just drop a point here on the sketch. Select that point and toggle construction to make it a real geometry point. Now we can constrain it coincident to the center of the external geometry circle and close the sketch. There are other ways to get a point of real geometry into our design, for example in the draft workbench. But we need to use a sketch whose plane is attached to the face so that the extruded guideline will be normal to that face. I'll extrude our point to create the first guideline. We'll take the default 10 millimeters and repeat the operation on the other side. Now we can create sketches to specify the inner and outer walls of the hose that we're going to create but I can see that it's going to be impossible to select the point from the guideline as external geometry because it's just too small. So let's close the sketch for a moment. Select both of our guidelines and in the combo box switch to the view tab and increase the size of the points. This does not affect the actual geometry of our model, only the presentation, making it easier to select the points later. Now we can go back to the sketch and easily select the point on the guideline as external geometry so that we can draw the circle for the inner wall. The outer radius of the flange is 10 millimeters, so let's make the inner radius of the hose 10.2 millimeters. 
for purposes of fitting. Now perform the same operation on the other side. Select our guidelines and create a blended curve between them. Because of a quirk in the curve's workbench, we must select our extrusions in the model and not in the combo view. The tool has anchored the blend curve somewhere near the midpoint of each of the guidelines, but we want it actually at the end so that when we do a sweep, we'll get a clean result. We can reset that in the data plane of the combo box. The anchor point for each side of the blend curve is known enigmatically as parameter 1 and parameter 2. Let's set both of those to 0. We tell it to go ahead and recompute and everything looks fine, so let's do our sweep. First we'll add the beginning and ending profiles. Now we click Sweep Path, select our blend curve, and click Done. Since our profiles are just circles, we would end up creating a surface with no thickness. This is not what we want here, so select Create Solid and click OK. That's certainly done what we asked it to do, but it looks like there's just too much hose and a hard kink in the middle. We can adjust that after the fact by selecting the blend curve out of our sweep and going down to the parameters scale 1 and scale 2. The absolute value of the scale parameter more or less specifies how rigorously the blend curve should follow the start and end curves. So let's reduce those values a bit. We can press Ctrl R as we go so that we can see how we're doing until we get a more gradual curve in the hose with a little bit less length. That's looking a lot better. We still have enough scale to make sure that the hose comes up along the flange, but low enough that it can curve gently in the middle. Keep in mind that there is no sort of collision detection here. If we lower the scale values too much, it will happily route the blend curve directly point to point in a straight line with our hose running right through the flanges. Now we follow the same procedure to create sketches for the outer wall of the eventual hose. It can be a little bit hard sometimes to select the point for external geometry, so we may need to tilt the plane of the sketch just a little bit in order to get what we want. No need to worry about the tilt. Anything we create in the sketch will still be created flat on the plane. So let's specify the circle for the outer wall. We want a 1 mm thick hose, so the radius will be 11.2 mm. Now we repeat the procedure on the other side. For unknown reasons, it gives me no trouble at all selecting the external geometry this time. Now we need to create the sweep for the outer wall of the hose. But as you can see, we have a problem. We cannot select the path if we cannot see it. So first let's hide the inner wall of the hose to expose the blend curve. Now we select the sweep again and the beginning and ending profiles of the sweep. We create a solid. and OK, and we promptly run into a small bug in FreeCAD. It wants us to select the sweep path only after we select the profiles. 
So select the sweep path one more time and press OK. Now we get what we wanted. Because we selected Create Solid for our sweeps, we now have a solid object connecting our inlet and our outlet. To hollow it out, we select the outer wall, then the inner wall, and we do a Boolean cut to turn it into a hollow hose. Now for the final frosting on the cake. We know very well that in the real world, when the hose is installed, it is not going to be perfectly flush at both ends. So let's change things up a little bit to reflect that reality. We open up the cut and open up the sweeps inside. Now we'll add a 3mm Z offset to all of our profile sketches and to parameter 1 and parameter 2 of the blend curve. And now you can see that the hose has been inserted into the flange, leaving a 3mm gap just like the real world. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.